Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and I'm finally getting the chance to share with you guys this card I made, gosh, I think it was about a month ago. <laughs> um, I use the My Favorite Things Tremendous Dynamics negative die cuts from the previous cards I had made using these dies. Rather than toss out these negative die cuts, I decided to try some no-line watercoloring. So all I'm doing is taking these negatives and I'm going to use, this is a sketch and wash pencil. Basically it is a pencil that um, is activated by water. If you don't have anything like this, um, you can use just a regular pencil. You just want to use a very, very light hand because you obviously don't want the pencil lines to show up. And when you watercolor over pencil lines, the watercolor will trap the pencil lines. You won't be able to erase them. So I had picked this up at a art supply store and um, yeah, still trying to use a light hand with this. This was actually the, f I think the first time I've ever used this. And this was one of my, actually one of my first attempts at no line watercoloring. I thought these more graphic shapes of the trees would be simpler to do. So the other attempts you guys have seen me do in other videos were done after this one, <laughs> but because of the miracle of video editing and timeline and me losing video footage, which happens all the time, you guys are just getting to see this now. So I traced out all these trees and the um, trunks and everything. And then I'm just using my little mini eraser just to erase some of these larger areas um, because I didn't want that to show up. And then you're gonna see me, I scribbled this pencil there on that negative just to see how well it does work out with water. And you can see it removes fairly well, but it's the same thing. You wanna use a very light touch with the pencil. You don't wanna like press really deeply down and create a really harsh line. Um, by the time this is all said and done, you won't be able to see any of the pencil lines. So I was happy with it. So once I had my whole little scene sketched out here, I pulled out my Mission Gold watercolors and just started watercoloring this in. And I've super, super sped all of this up. I'm not sure exactly how long I spent doing this because as always I do it in you know little sessions just between life and kids and everything but the big thing obviously with no line watercolor is you can only work on one spot at a time which with a little scene like this works out quite well I just make sure to work on areas that are not touching because you don't otherwise the color is going to bleed into the, the space it's touching if you know I did both trees side by side there while the first one was still a little bit wet so I did the first tree and then I went on to the third tree and I just I took my time as I did this trying to be as neat as possible which I have said in many videos patience is not my strong point especially when it comes to watercolor but I'm starting to just enjoy it more and more for what it is <laughs> and go in and just take the time to fill in the color and not always be you know slapping the color on and being messy with it so once the first two trees were dry I went in and filled in the third tree and because like I said this is a sketch and wash pencil I went right up to those lines and kind of would work at it just a tiny little bit with the tip of the brush so that it would um blend out that um pencil edge so that there are no lines will be seen. So I did that with each area and each color. So with the tree areas, I went right up to the edge of the line and kind of worked it out with the pencil. And then as each area dried, I went on to the next area. I didn't do any fancy blending with these as well. I just added the color. I didn't go back in and do like, you could really turn this into like a beautiful, you know, work of art add in more um, colors and blend things and add in texture, you know, all that sort of thing. But since this was my first attempt, I just wanted to see if I could do it and it would turn out okay. Now, you know, as I get into it more and more, maybe down the road, I'll do something and I'll add in, you know, more layers of color and texture and all that sort of thing. Um, because you can really, you can go anywhere with it. It's, it's watercolor. You can take it wherever you want to go. But, um, yeah, with this, I just kept it fairly simple. And these watercolors are so nice that they even just using pretty much one color at a time, they still lended themselves to just a nice bit of um, texture on their own, if that makes sense. So I just kept picking up the color. Oh, and of course I forgot to mention, I'm using a silver size four brush for this. And yeah, I've already done reviews on the Mission Gold watercolor palette. These were all tube watercolors that I just squeezed into the palette. And then you can see here how they're all dry. And then I just reactivate that dried watercolor with my wet paintbrush. So they basically act 
like a pan watercolor, really. Um, I've done, I have swatches there. You can kind of see it right in the top left corner um, because when they're all dry, like on camera even, these all look almost black <laughs> and they're actually greens and blues and all that. Um, another thing I like about this palette, there's a lot of really pretty greens in here. And then when you start playing with it a bit more and start mixing colors, it, like options are limitless. So I did all the trees first and then I went in, I just, you know, at the beginning there, you saw me kind of freehand sketch my little hill, you know, I, I again, didn't go too fancy. You don't need to do anything fancy here. And then I watercolored that with um, another shade of green. And then once that was dry, I mixed up some blue heavily with water. I wanted it to be fairly light. It looks quite dark here when I first put it on, but it dries lighter. And I just would add more and more water to my brush to let it kind of fade out to white as well as I was picking up some of the color with a tissue, just kind of blot it, kind of alluding to clouds, yet I didn't want to get too fancy here. My whole intention was to try and create a background that was fairly seamless, which this is a large, you know, area, and I went a little off camera there, but it worked. I really enjoyed doing this, and now that I'm, like, watching this again, since I made this card, like I said, a month ago, whenever it was, um... I kind of want to do it again. <laughs> so watercolored everything in, picked up a little bit with the tissue just to soften things, and then I let it completely dry. So once it was dry, I pulled out my Big Shot, and then I'm using the largest die from the My Favorite Things Blueprints 25 Dynamics. This has a stitched edge along it, and it is the exact size of an A2 card. So it's four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. So that for me was perfect. I thought about just trimming it down with my paper trimmer and then I saw this die and I was like, perfect. One, does the work for me. Two, adds a stitched edge. Three, doesn't interfere with this whole little watercolor scene because I didn't want to like chop it down too much. And then I pulled out the Simon Says Stamp. This is the Friendship Messages stamp set. I thought the font was perfect and I thought for a minute, I was like, oh, maybe I should, you know, I was going to stamp it, you know, stamp and emboss it on vellum, but I didn't want to add anything to this. So instead I pulled out my mini Misty here and then my little clear transparency sheet to get this sentiment completely straight. I was a little bit nervous about doing this because again, I put, you know, all this effort into watercoloring it and then I heavily coated it with anti-static powder. And using the Misty just helps, one, because it's a long straight sentiment, so you know, I made sure I got it stamped straight, and also because if this didn't turn out perfectly, <laughs> I could re-stamp it, you know, re-emboss it. So I'm stamping it with Versamark ink, so clear sticky ink, doesn't look like anything at the moment. And then the magic happens when I pour the detail white embossing powder over that. And that's when it was like, I just felt relief. <laughs> So poured that over, tapped it over on my coffee filter so that I can funnel it back into the container when I'm done and then heat that with my heat tool. I let my heat tool get really good and hot first and then it didn't take very long to melt it. And then I pulled out my Misty a second time to stamp the um, companion sentiment that I chose on the inside of the card because same thing. Um, the sentiments when they're like this, when they're really like all along a straight line, you know, really long, it's so easy to get them, um, crooked or stamp them crooked or, you know, so this one especially because it's just a long thin stamp. So I fiddled with it a bit until I got it lined up with that transparency sheet and then, um, I'm able to ink it up. So I'm using some of my favorite things. This is there. I'm not even sure what color of ink this is offhand. It's elf green. That's what I used. <laughs> elf green dye ink. And same thing. It didn't stamp perfectly or at least as deeply as I wanted the first time. So I inked it up a second time and stamped it and then it was perfect. So got that um, stamped and then I applied a generous amount of adhesive to the back of the watercolor panel here and then adhered that to my card base, which was four and a quarter by 11 inches heavyweight white cardstock that I scored at five and a half. So it's an A2 sized card. So that completely finished off the card. I just kept it simple, didn't add any more embellishments, just left it like that. And as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have links to the supplies used, all that info. So check that out in the description box below if that interests you. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.